Everyone following all right? All right. So you have your revenues, and then you have your, uh, the, the cogs, the cost of the goods that you're selling. Then you have your fixed, and we can immediately think of a whole bunch of things, right? You have your waste management, you have your rent, you have your salaries, you have your um, utilities, you have um, any, um, uh, the, the water, you have trash. You have a whole bunch of things that come into regular play for your business. And then that gets you your total total here, right? And by the way, this is called your gross margin. You'll see this on, this, on the sheets that we have handed out. And then this here is called your total uh, fixed expenses. And then here is your net income or net loss, right? So you have to find out exactly how do the numbers fall in. You put a dime or a dollar on top of my business, and then out drops a nickel, 35 cents, 25 cents. What is it, right? And when you're putting together these financial statements, this would be kind of the second half of the class, you can actually do some analysis on what is happening. When you get a financial statement, you can do ratios. How much money do they earn just their gross margin per roast beef sandwich that they sell? Or how much do they earn in total their sales compared to all their expenses? Is this a viable business entirely, right? So that's your income statement. And there's five questions you need to ask from your income statement. Number one, is the company growing? We see that because, because what? How do we monitor whether the company is growing? Profit, over time, right? And when you're doing projections, you can kind of see what's going on here. Now, say if this is 12 months, you may pass by the holidays that are very important to you, whether it's Diwali or Mother's Day or Valentine's Day or Christmas or Hanukkah, right? And those things have their peaks and troughs, but you account for that right in here, into your financial statements. Right? Next thing is, does the company control its margins? What does that mean? Control the cost. Control the cost, that's absolutely right. Uh, margins on the product, meaning uh, the, is the price of the roast beef sandwich getting higher and higher and higher, and they're not increasing their sales, right? We've lived in a time where we've had a spike in um, um, oil prices. We've seen the influence of that on food. 10 pound bag of flour used to be one price, $10, and now it's $50. You've seen pizza go from, I monitor this stuff, like 250 to now 325, and you're like, what? Right? But the thing is, that's controlling your margins. Is the business really running this well and making sure that they are protecting their profits? Does the company control overhead? Overhead is all your fix, right? Are you running a really expensive model? Did you pack a whole bunch of value into the walls and the, um, crown molding and then equipment in your business that you have to earn a certain number of sales in order to cover that or bust? Or did you keep it conservative and you made sure that your overhead grew with the growth of your business versus like putting in a very expensive model and then asking your, for your, rent, your uh, landlord if you can chip off the paint and pay rent and pay rent with that, right? Uh -huh. You don't want to get into that situation. It can be too expensive to run your model based on your growth projection. So watch how those two things balance out. Daycares get into this a lot. Any daycares in the room? Um, that sometimes what they do is they actually have to go through this growth phase because you have to have a certain number of um, adults per children, right? And so after 14, then you have to get one more person that takes you all the way up to 26 or something like that. You're paying that one person's salary to have now 15 kids, right? How do you make sure that you can make that jump from 14 to 26 as quickly as possible, right? To justify hiring on another teacher just to get more than 14. So uh, next one is, is the company profitable overall, your net income, and is there hidden cash flow? Do you have subsidized rent? Do you have loans that you really don't have to kind of pay back, really, uh, that you think? Uh, that don't have interest. Do you, uh, are you foregoing a salary for a period of time? That's a subsidized model and putting that into a permanent state of running your business, it's a countdown to when you close, right? So you need to be self-aware of where the little subsidies in your business are sneaking in. Remember, it's a real business, you treat it seriously. The next one is, is the cash flow statement. And you'll see on the cash flow statement, I just want to make sure that I, I write this down correctly. Do you have this really quick? 
I gave out all my copies here. I'll bring it right back to you. The cash flow statement, and I'm just going to do this very easily here. And what is my time, please, Brian? All right, great. So the cash flow statement breaks down cash in, cash out for three different categories. It breaks it down for your operations, okay? And this includes your net income, right? And we got that number from our income statement. We're now bringing it over to our cash flow statement. That's called uh, when statements flow. And then you, are, um, then you have a few of the details here. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. We expense it on the income statement because but we're only talking about cash. We have to add that back in so it doesn't count anymore on the cash flow statement. And then you also have um, investments. And then you have financing activities. Now, you will notice here that, um, thank you very much, the uh, cash flow statement and the income statement is really analyzing a block of time from January 1, 2009 to December 31st, 2009. It's looking at the activity that happened in that period. So what you're doing here with your cash flow statement is you're looking at all the operation, cash in and out, all the investment in and out, that means the equipment, the furniture, any significant pieces of equipment that you bought for your business. Finally, financing. Loans in, loans paid back. You have um, maybe uh, equity that you've um, invested into your business and that became a cash inflow into the business, right? So everything that happened within that period, at the end of the period, you erase the board and you start all over again with the cash flow statement. Same thing with the income statement. It's only tracking a period of time. The final statement we're going to talk, to, talk about today doesn't work like that. But let's just continue on with the cash flow statement. Because it's one thing to have a sale, and it's another thing to have the cash, right? Somebody can have sales like gangbusters, but then they have no cash. You ever heard of asset rich, ca asset rich cash poor, right? So you need to make sure that you're collecting your money. It's one of the best things that you can see from this. Because if you're not, then you have a problem somewhere or it's a normal part of your business and you need to make sure they have access to working capital to be able to manage that aspect of your business, right? But that's what this cash flow statement helps you to analyze. Only cash. Income statement with sales, right? If you're the kind of business that is selling a roast beef sandwich, net 30, um, then, don't do that by the way, um, but the thing is is that you don't have that cash in hand yet, right? But if you have a business that is uh, in web development, right? You get your advance, you deliver services, you send the invoice, you wait, and then you get your money, and then wait, okay, right? And then you get your money. So the thing is your cash flow statement is tracking, tracking actual cash, your income statement does not. Cash flow statement results from the difference between cash received and the payments that you're making. The cash flow only happens when actual payments are made. <clears throat> and um, I just set those points here, so I'm going to go on to the next one. This is our last slide. All right, so the balance sheet is our final statement. <coughs> and two train stops away on the four and five where people can make an entire living just analyzing balance sheets. So, and everything we're reading about in the papers has to do with this financial statement. And so what the balance sheet is actually doing is it is a snapshot, a period of time. Basically, they're coming up to their business and saying, stop all operations. How much do you own and how much do you owe? Right then and there. If you had to liquidate, you know, what's your net worth, right? So it's, it's a right snapshot, flash in time. How much do you own? How much do you owe? 